You know what's good? Books that inspire you, that give you entertainment and education at the same time. But you know what's better? Books that transform you. The ones that give you a clear before and after result when you're done. I pulled out five of my personal favorites that did just that, and I'll share them with you in this video. These are the five self-improvement books that actually worked. Geronimo, let's go. How to win friends and influence people. This is like S tier material. Most people think they know what's in here, but they haven't read it in like 10, 20 years. And when I go back and reread this, I'm always walking away with another one, two things that I apply that week and I have better conversations. And people misunderstand this book they think it's people pleasing or it's manipulative and sure there's social tactics that are under that umbrella but dude this book is just old school american charisma but what i took away from this book that will hopefully add some value here for you if you ask 10 people do you like small talk i guarantee you all 10 are going to be like hell no get me out of these like weather conversations <laughs> Oof, these crazy arizona summers the weather let me tell you huh? and if you don't know social skills or simple little communication habits you'll default to this every time because it's just what's everyone else does. Now I will say here, it is inappropriate to go into a conversation in the deep end right away. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, Clark. What's your take on the current political climate? Pump the brakes too far, too fast, too soon. So small talk, everyone rolls their eyes. Going straight into the deep end is not reading the room. What's the solution? That's where Dale Carnegie comes in. He says, speak in terms of other people's interests. Now, how I interpret this and have used this in my life and why it has changed my social interactions is I frame this as finding out people's secret obsession. Have you ever ridden in an Uber where it was small talk and you're like checking your phone the whole time? But then there's some Uber rides where like you and the driver hit it off on a topic and it's fun and it goes by like that. That's like a secret obsession right there. And it's a hack for every conversation. And where I learned about it was this book. Secret obsessions can be anything. They can be interests, sports, hobbies, weightlifting, supplements, conspiracy theories. Assume that everybody has an interesting secret obsession that once you find out will light them up. So a meta takeaway through all of that is put some effort in to your relationships and interactions and don't feel like it's fake if you're putting effort in. Good conversation, good interactions that will actually fill you up over time, take effort. Might take you some practice, might take you a few times, but you'll eventually get the hang of it and watch how your boring, stiff interactions that are just small talk turn around into fun, exciting, cool conversations with people. Stumbling on Happiness by Daniel Gilbert. Copy number one, and it got so marked up, I couldn't read it anymore. It was illegible, like my handwriting. <laughs> and copy number two. So who this book is for is if you're a seeker, like you're someone who loves learning about these self-improvement concepts. You watch videos, you read books, you love learning about yourself. This book will flip some of the things you thought you knew about, oh, I was so certain that that's what I want my life to look like, or that's how I predict I will be in the future. This book says, not so fast, buddy. Your mind is playing a few tricks on you. And unlike other psychology books that can just be dense and full of jargon, this book is light, funny. I think Dan Gilbert would crush open mics. <laughs> but why is this a self-improvement book that actually worked? This was the first book that really showed me that you have a superpower. You know what that is? It's your ability to think greater into the future. Like this sounds basic because you do it every day your whole life. Oh, who am I gonna be in five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road? But when you really boil it down, no other animal does this. Squirrels will stash nuts for a rainy day in the near future, but that's more instinct based and instinct driven. Animals don't really comprehend what am I gonna do for the next 10 to 20 years of my life? What we're talking about here is that higher level visualization. The biggest accomplishment was not building the iPhone. It was thinking far enough into the future that that's a possibility. But there's a problem. Your mind plays tricks on you. Little magic tricks like it goes over in the book. Some of the oldest advice you can give kids is what? You probably heard it growing up. Don't forget to dream. Dream big. But then what happens? We get life experience and life just beats you down over and over again with failures and we get jaded as adults. And if you don't catch yourself and snap out of it, you can victimize yourself and develop these negative stories that are limiting like I'm the person it never worked out for or I can't because fill in the blank. You can't let yourself go there because negativity weighs 
pounds, while positivity unfortunately weighs ounces. Like he talks about in the book, we're all prone to look for failure, lack, what's missing, what will go wrong. After all, being a pessimist, being negative, that is the laziest thing you can do. It takes effort to think bigger. It takes energy to develop positivity like a muscle that you use over and over again until that becomes your default neural pathways. So stumbling on happiness changed my worldview on several things and behaviors and thought traps. Seriously, when I go back through and read this, I have on this channel used so many concepts from it. I'm like, oh, that's where I got that from. No, what, this book again? It's one of those. So from a professional and personal standpoint, this one, fantastic read. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So this next book frames self-improvement, not as like light and fluffy. It takes an intense view on it. It says that all that negative self-talk or limiting beliefs or the voice inside your head that says you look dumb or you can't, it's gonna fail, it's not gonna work out. That's you fighting a battle. It's called the war of art that you're at war with that internal monologue and you didn't get dressed up for nothing. Let me just read you the back cover. <laughs> Why didn't I think of this when I was making this video? Do you dream about writing a great American novel? Do you regret not finishing your paintings, poems, or screenplays? Do you want to start a business or charity? Do you wish you could start dieting or exercising today? Do you hope to run a marathon someday? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you need the war of art. This powerful straight from the hip examination of the internal obstacles to success. The war of art shows you how to identify defeats and unlock the inner barriers to creativity. Perfect book if you're a starting entrepreneur, you're a starting visionary, you're a creative, or you're trying to move from your lower self to your higher self. It was hard for me to choose one before and after because this book is like one of my most gifted ones to clients. I say, hey, you got to read The War of Art. You're starting a business, read The War of Art. Oh, you want to be a musician? Read The War of Art. There's such a odd sense of relief when you put words to things you thought you were the only one struggling with. Your own internal monologue or your own negative self-talk or when you want to quit things, he names it resistance and that this isn't some light, fluffy self-improvement concept where you got to think bigger and just feel good about everything that you're literally going to war to create your art, to move from your lower self to your higher self. And this internal resistance wants to keep you in your comfort zone so you're safe. But guess what? The 2.0 you and everything you want is by definition outside your current comfort zone, otherwise you would already have it by now. That doesn't just come effortlessly and easy all the time. There's moments with intense battles of resistance. In the early days, I would get super inspired to like write a video outline and I would research it for like two, three hours. And then right as I went to hit that little red dot, boop, and hit record, I would have a convenient excuse of, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, or oh, I'm not in the right headspace, or oh, my energy's a little low, maybe I slept wrong. And I noticed that pattern coming up over and over again. And then one day I looked myself in the mirror and I'm like, how are you going to make this thing real? How are you gonna serve as many people as you wanna serve if you can't get over yourself, if you are afraid of filming videos? And so when I read this book, it summed up everything I was going through. And that's why I say like this channel, what you're watching right now, I don't think it would exist guys without this book. So maybe like me, you noticed that starting things is really fun, is really easy, but finishing things can be really tough because learning and doing are two different things. And doing is really fun, but learning can kind of suck. Learning how to play the drums is really boring and it's a lot of resistance and it's times where you want to quit and it's times where you're sick of playing the same rudiment thousands of times to ingrain it in your motor memory. Playing the drums, doing it is really fun. Learning how to build a business where you're like a glorified tech programmer and you're learning about, you know, automations and legalities, not very fun, but doing it to where you're making $10,000 a month online or whatever benchmark you set, gaining your freedom, that's really fun. The only way you're gonna transition from learning to doing is if you push through that resistance. There's a saying, courage isn't having no fear. Courage on the battlefield is taking action in spite of fear. And that the hero and the coward feel the same emotions, it's just what they do with it that makes the difference. So sorry if it feels like I'm screaming at you, but dude, this book, The War of Art, 
fantastic read. I cannot recommend this enough for you. Next up, we got an essay that's an old school American classic, one that promotes individualism as the highest form of authenticity and not conforming to the crowd or the masses, which is extremely hard to do in this social media groupthink environment. This is none other than Ralph Waldo Emerson. His essay I'm referring to is Self-Reliance. You know, he has tons of writings, but I chose Self-Reliance because I think it's most applicable and easy to start with for you. Love this edition right here. You can pick up on Amazon, it's Seth Godin's Domino Project. Easier way to summarize what this is, is dude, this is the OG classic on what it means to truly not give a fuck. I read this essay every single year, and it's very short. You can read it in under an hour on YouTube. They have audio versions of this being read. Why this worked as a before and after, like the biggest takeaway I got from it was actually a quote. He says, speak what you think now in hard words, then tomorrow speak what tomorrow thinks in hard words again, though it should contradict everything you said today. Ah, so you'll be misunderstood. Pythagoras was misunderstood, Socrates and Jesus and Luther and Copernicus and Galileo and Newton and every pure and wise spirit that ever took flesh. To be great is to be misunderstood. To get personal here, you know, one thing I've learned through doing shadow work and really journaling is that I have a fear of being misunderstood. And I've noticed it, like I'll write a video outline or some points I wanna make and like everything will be down to the T. It's like the thought that if I don't say every single thing I want to say and exactly how I want to say it, then people are gonna take that one piece and you know, it's gonna be a firestorm or something like that. When I hit a million subscribers, which is crazy, I'm, I'm so thankful. I noticed the shift in how people view you. And yeah, it's positive because some people view you as big, but then there's the shadow side of that where people see a million subscribers and they're like, oh, he can take it. You know, I'm just gonna project all my internal unhappiness onto this comment. And it confused me because like, we don't talk politics on this channel. We don't get into controversial issues. We don't get into drama, but there's still like the occasional hater. And before I stopped reading comments, it would get to me because I'm human. And for the longest time, it got under my skin or I'd want to like formulate a response in my head and like there's the misunderstood shadow coming up again. Like, oh, they just misunderstood. Let me like formulate this perfect response. Then something changed when I realized a lot of the reasons we get into ideas like self-improvement. When I think back to why I got in it, and maybe you can relate to this, wasn't because everything was going good. It was the opposite. It was, I didn't like myself. I didn't like my headspace and things in my life weren't going good. I was 30 grand in debt in my mom's basement and had no future. And so once I realized that, I had this whole shift of like compassion for people who project from that space because they're watching content like this because they want to change their life. They know that they're negative or they know that they need help, but that's so deeply ingrained that it comes out as a projection onto you. And so it's not even that you're misunderstood, it's that they're projecting their own internal negative self-talk onto you. You're a punching bag, you're a target. And again, this is not poor me, I've made it in any way, shape or form. I am blessed, I've chosen this career path, I know this is part of the game. My point is that when you choose to be positive and like show up as your highest self and that's your intention, your 2.0, know that there's still people who are gonna misunderstand you. And that's okay. And that's actually none of our business. That's on them. So if you're gonna do anything public or you're gonna put your art out into the world, even if you have correct intentions or you try to be the best version of you and show up as that, prepare to be misunderstood. Or as Emerson would put it, to believe your own thoughts, to believe what is true in your private heart is true for all men, that is genius. Speak your latent conviction. We have one final book that I think will give you a before and after transformation. Remember how we spoke about this book being like a very intense view on resistance? Um, it's sort of a masculine viewpoint on overcoming yourself. It'll make you come all over yourself. <laughs> Overcoming yourself. Get your mind out of the gutter, guys. Come on. This book is the opposite approach, a more feminine approach 
to overcoming yourself. It's called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, and it is probably one of my favorite books I've read in the last couple years. I believe it's like three decades old though. The best way I can summarize this book is it's like a treasure map for you. It allows you to uncover the parts of your creative artist that's been buried. Similar to the frame of an inner child within us all, you know, you're a kid and you pick up wounds and then you become an adult, but you still have all those internal blocks and wounds, and if you don't get over them, they'll still affect you. It's the same thing with creativity, that you have an inner tortured artist that needs to be recovered, nurtured, and worked with. So this book is laid out as a 12-week course, although I just read it straight through, chock full of exercises, and it's a perfect read for you if you're someone who is creative, or if you're someone who's into shadow work, or you're someone who wants to be an entrepreneur. This is a beautiful angle on that subject. One of the points that I walked away from this book with is that of a shadow artist. Growing up, a lot of people view the arts as nice to haves, as sort of luxuries. Like your parents might have told you, oh, that's great, you wanna be a musician, but you're gonna be an engineer or a lawyer in college, right? Oh, you wanna build a company, but how are you gonna pay the bills? How do you know if you're a shadow artist? Well, this will manifest as anger a lot of times for people. Counter to what people think, anger isn't always bad. And usually with anger, people want to throw things or smash things or avoid it or suppress it. But the only thing we really don't do with it is listen to it. Listen to what it's trying to tell us. Examples Julia Cameron gives is someone who looks at a film and says, screw them, man, I could make a better film than this. Anger in that sense is saying you want to make movies, time to learn how. Anger can also manifest in proving people wrong. Or you want to prove your dad wrong or your mom wrong or someone who didn't believe in you. That can be a very powerful fuel source for you. Anger can be transformed from a negative thing that we think it is and if you channel it correctly can turn into a positive. So if you're interested in creativity or transmuting anger or your shadow self at all and you want exercises, tools, and resources, Artist Way is a fantastic book that will help you uncover that buried artist within. I hope your Amazon cart is overflowing by the end of this video. Uh, you got one or two books that you're gonna pick up run with and I hope you read them. I hope they have a transformation like they did for me. Speaking of shadow work, let's get into that. I'll link up right here a perfect follow up to this video. If you made it to the end, you want to keep the party going. It's a great place to be. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you and all your supports. I'll see you in the next video. Stop settling. Start living. See ya.